The first job of a politician is to get elected. Only then do they get to govern. Because of this, we often see some interesting proposals on the campaign trail. In this part of the series, we're going to talk about one of those policies, no tax on Social Security. Now, I'm not going to be shy about my opinion, and I think most economists agree with me. This is one of the worst policies of the series. But it could be an excellent one with one small change. Trump is who proposed the idea of no tax on Social Security, although in his defense we haven't heard this recently, so this may have gone the way of the dodo. However, I think this one is important enough to discuss in case it kind of ever resurfaces. So to be clear, we're talking about not taxing the benefits that retirees are receiving who've started Social Security. We're not talking about the taxes you pay while you're working before you start receiving benefits. So one of the reasons that not taxing Social Security is such a bad idea is because there is already an income limit that if you earn under it, you don't pay taxes on Social Security. So you can see those numbers right here. So if you're single and earn 25,000 or joint, so a couple that earns less than 32,000, you already don't pay taxes on your social security. If you're in this band for a single or in this band for a joint, then 50% of your benefits are taxable. That's not taxed at 50%, 50% of them become taxable as income. And then if you're above those bands, 85% of your benefits are taxable. So if we were to remove taxes on Social Security benefits, it would be a major tax break for wealthy retirees and a pretty good tax break for middle class retirees. But it would do nothing for seniors who live solely on Social Security because if you earn less than 25 or 32,000 as, as a couple, you already don't pay taxes on Social Security. If you've watched any of my videos on population collapse or the future demographics of the US, then you will understand that a major portion of the US population in the future is going to be middle class and wealthy retirees. And if we are gonna give them a substantial tax break, then we really need to understand how that's going to impact the budget and the deficit, which is going to be at the end of this series. And this would be a very expensive policy and probably be moving in the wrong way. I'll also link a video at the end which kind of goes into all of this demographics and why a policy like this would be so damaging. So how could we change this policy to actually be a pretty darn good one? And that's change these numbers, right? This 25,000 and 32,000. These numbers come from 1983. They haven't changed in 40 years. Right? There are certainly seniors out there that earn more than 25000 or more than 32000 that are struggling and a tax break could help. And these haven't changed in so long. If we just put a little cost of living adjustment, they move up a little bit every year or bump them up now and then put like kind of an annual adjustment. This would be a tax break for those who probably need it the most, seniors who are living solely on Social Security and would not nearly be the expensive policy that just not taxing all Social Security would be. Candidates get a bad rap on the campaign trail. Both sides are accused of buying votes with bad policies. But we have to understand that that's a reflection of the voter base. And the easiest way for us to change that is to change how selfishly we vote. If you want to continue with this series on the different candidates' tax policies, then I'll put that video here. And if you're interested in those demographic changes and population collapse that I talked about in the middle of the video, I'll put that video here. Stick around the channel for similar content, and I will talk to you soon.